You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Pastor Kathleen Panning. Kathleen Panning, who has been an ordained minister for over 35 years, brings her experience to your ministry, be it energizing your staff or working through conflicts with your faith community. So now, please welcome the host of A Flame Ministry, Pastor Kathleen Panning. minister, whatever that title may be, as well as for those who are in leadership positions within your faith community. And we talk about a variety of things. Sometimes, if depending on my guest, it might be trying to dispel misunderstandings between faiths and build some bridges. Uh, but most of the time, it's um, about things that are common to all faiths because there are things about us as human beings. And my guest today is a part of that second category. She is Stacy Golden Liznock, uh, the owner and founder of Got It Together Now, a system designed to support people in all stages of life to plan, prepare, update, and organize the documents they need in case they become ill or pass away. She also hosts the Legacy Therapy Podcast, a weekly show about planning a stress-free legacy. Uh, after over 30 years of experience in the financial services industry, Stacy has seen the cost of unpreparedness in a health crisis or end-of-life event that could have been prevented. Um, Many of her clients have benefited from her ability to uncover problem areas in their paperwork before it was too late to correct. Her ultimate plan is to help families focus on people, not paperwork, when turmoil hits home. Her online course, called Got It Together Emergency Info File, is how she's helping families leave a stress-free legacy rather than the chaos that happens when no planning has taken place. And Stacy, welcome. I was hearing a little bit of uh, interference here, so hopefully everything is good to go. But welcome to the Flame Ministry. Thank you, Kathleen. I hope you can hear me okay. I can hear you just fine. I can hear you just fine. Yeah, this seems like... Uh, an odd time to deal with this issue. So give me a little bit about how you transitioned from financial advisor to financial advocate, as should we say. Yeah, well, you know, I, I came up with that name, financial advocate, because I spent 30-plus uh, years as a financial advisor. I was a certified financial planner, and I uh, helped a lot of people in that realm. But I think financial advocate is more appropriate a term for what I'm doing now, which is um, come to come to come to be because I personally had a health crisis back in 2018, and it just totally changed my mindset around uh, this whole idea of being prepared and having all your ducks in a row. And in fact, I was going to call my company Ducks in a Row. I kept thinking, <laughs> I want my ducks in a row. But mm -hmm. um, but anyways, I, I went with Got It Together Now. Um, it just it just seems really great because if you've got it together, there is so much that you can prevent as far as family uh, fighting and lawsuits. There's so much that could happen that could go wrong. But just just to answer your question, like like the financial advocate part of it, I think is very powerful because people do need an advocate. Yes, yeah, so 
I mean, as a pastor or, you know, professional faith leader, we see people in all kinds of situations. And it might be an accident. It might be a sudden illness. Right now we're dealing with COVID and all that that brings. And, you know, I, I've seen what happens in families at times where uh, you know, that stress and strain comes in. So what are some of the things uh, that you see in family dynamics that happen with all of this? Well, you know, you bring up a, a good point about the family dynamics. Um, I have a, a good friend who um, he was an insurance agent at one point. He decided he didn't want to be in insurance. He wanted to, to be in the pastoral kind of area. So he became a chaplain. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me he, he went to work for a hospice company. And so, you know, dealing with people in hospice care, of course, they're in their right. final stage of life. And they're a lot of times they're um, it's, it's interesting when the hospice because sometimes they're very alert and other times they're pretty much in a coma. But mm -hmm. but in his case, he was telling me a story. Uh, it's, he says it's happened a lot where he'll go into a home where there's somebody that's gone in their last rites or they're, you know, they're at their final stages of life, and the family will be there all gathered around, um, and they will be arguing already about what they're going to get, and they're arguing about, like, like these things. The person hasn't even passed on yet. And mm. so this whole family dynamic is, is something that we really need to take a look at because there's really no need for it. Um, most of the time, it's misunderstandings and miscommunications that cause that whole thing to happen. And I think that um, if, if you're a person that's passed on and, and, and came back here to see what actually happened to your family and, and see that they're not even talking to one another, that they're suing one another, um, it would be very heartbreaking because we raise our families not to be that way. We want loving families and we want them to have generations mm -hmm. and generations of knowing who you're who your people are, right? Mm -hmm. And, and if, yeah. you totally, if you totally segregated yourself from your actual family, then um, the next generations don't even know who their, who their families are. Yeah, and I, I mean, one of the issues that comes up with this that I personally faced with my parents uh, as my as they were getting older, and my father has since passed away, but it was even getting them to start talking about some things. Now, they had wills and, you know, that kind of stuff prepared, but things like, um, the, the, you know, do not resuscitate orders and, and some of those other things, you know, sometimes even getting them to start the conversation can be very difficult when it comes to talking about money and uh, death and what happens. How, how do you start that? Yeah, that's a big thing. That's huge. It's, a lot of that is the generational, you know, it comes down from one generation to the next to the next, and you only can know what you learn from the people who bring you up, right, and, the, and mm -hmm. kind of by what you see going on around you. And so it's very... Um, disheartening when you when you have an elder ch uh, parent and you, and you want to help them and you're greeted with uh, oh gosh it happened in my house too like <laughs> you know my, my mom I remember asking her about the mortgage one time and I said mom mm -hmm. you know how much is the mortgage oh you think I would ask for something horrible she her <laughs> response back was just was just so nasty and, and like I was really prying and so mm -hmm. I think that generation, my mom would be over 100 if she was still alive today. So she was born uh, yeah. in the, you know, 1919, that, in mm -hmm. that era. But, but it's like they didn't share personal things. They didn't want you to know about their finances or even about their health. Some of them won't even really tell you what the doctor says or what mm -hmm. medications they should be taking or what, what, the, you know, what should be going on. But the thing about that is, is that there's ways to, to approach it. Um, you know, one real quick easy one is, is that whole thing where, like, let's say you're you're caring for an elder, and you also have uh, your your own family, so you're kind of that sandwich generation. 
And so, so basically you start out by saying, you know, mom, gosh, I'm, I'm taking care of you so much. If something happened to me, I don't even know what would happen to you, right? Like we need to talk about this. I need to get my things together. So you put yourself there first. And yeah, then and, and the subject. with them. Yeah, uh, we have to take a first break, but there's so much more to talk about. And I want to continue this conversation about how to approach the subject. But this is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Penning. You're listening to A Flame Ministry. Stay tuned. Stacy and I have a lot more to share. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Welcome back. This is A Flame Ministry. We are here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host, and my guest today is Stacy Golden Lisnak. She is a um, let's see, financial advocate is a term you use to talk about that to help people get their um, plan, prepare, update, and organize documents that we all really need at different stages in our lives. Um, and before the break, Stacy, you started sharing about how to broach the conversation. And that's such a big part of all of this, um, even getting into that conversation. I like what you said about starting with yourself. So say more about that. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's one of those things where you just put it all on yourself. And I think that's a, that's a common technique in a, in a lot of how you deal with people. But, but put it on yourself. It's like I was thinking that, uh, goodness, if I got sick or if I got in a car accident or something happened to me, what would happen to you if you're caring for your elder parents? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then and then kind of put it there so you know I've been thinking about it, and so I'm, I'm working on putting all of my things together. I need to have a backup. Who would you feel comfortable having to put in that position um, mm-hmm. and, and start with that? And then, and then you kind of, once you get through that a little bit, then you can say, you know, I was thinking um, we should start working on your paperwork because if something happens to you, I'm going to be, put in a position where I have to handle your affairs, I have to do things that I'm not going to really know what to do unless you clue me in. And then mm-hmm. start, start working on it bit by bit. It's not yeah. a one-day project, that's for sure. No, oh no, 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 not at all. It can be months and years of working on this. Um, you know, what you're saying is really, really important, but like with my own situation, my parents have had documents in place for many years. Um, 
but when my father passed away and my sister and I started, you know, trying to figure things out, we realized that there were things we didn't know that you know, all of a sudden, oh, there's this. Where is that? <laughs> you know, we get a letter from some place, something like that. So, right. you know, I, what what are some of the other things that need to be discussed in this that we're yeah. talking about? You, you bring up a, a really good point, and I think that a lot of um, the misconception around it is that, that it's just. The paperwork as far as like your will or your trust um, and sometimes people say yeah I've, I've got that handled we're good we're good we're good and then they mm-hmm. don't want to think about it anymore but really it's <clears throat> there's so many more steps to it and one of them is what you brought up you don't even know what you're looking for and sometimes yeah. you're finding it because a piece of mail comes but other times you'll never find it and a good example about that is maybe paid up life insurance there's no paper trail mm-hmm. You might not know where the papers are. You might never find them. And if it's paid up, you're not getting notifications like you would if there was like a late notice or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and and past employer um, benefits. So those things Uh you don't know. One of my friends recently found that his wife um, had a $25,000 death benefit at her prior job. And the only Ooh. reason he even found out about it was he got notified. He, they worked together at that point. I think that's where they met many years ago. Um, and mm-hmm. she passed away from cancer like a year ago. But he, mm-hmm. he got a letter on his own behalf and then called and said, hey, would there be anything for my wife on file there? Mm-hmm. So you see, things aren't, things, aren't, things aren't known unless somebody tells you. So <clears throat> that's part of the whole thing is it not just the paperwork, and there's, there's much more to it than than paperwork but when mm-hmm. you get to the paperwork part of it so much of that is wrong because Ooh. it's never been looked at like you said they did it a long time ago right like people mm-hmm. do their stuff and they put it away and they never look at it again and it might not even be correct so to your, yeah. to your point give us an example of some of the things that you found that people that aren't correct that people either things have changed or that it wasn't correct in the first place right well yeah that's that's good so one of the things that just came up recently um there was a a transposed um social security number um Uh, and that caused this whole huge problem that had to be mm -hmm. corrected before the claim like a claim could be paid um i had one where the name was misspelled so they have to clear that up before. Just like a bunch of hoops. If you've had somebody um, named as a beneficiary, as an example, uh, and they've already been, they've already predeceased you, then now you have to prove that that person has deceased. So now you have to provide all the documentation before the next people in line. You would maybe have contingent mm-hmm. beneficiaries. But a lot of people don't even have contingent beneficiaries, which is a huge mistake. Because then they yeah. take an asset like like life insurance that would be non probatable. It just it, you know just comes to you as a check. There's no court involved mm-hmm. or anything like that. But if it then becomes a, a to the estate, now you have to go through probate. So oh. there's things that people just don't realize. I had um, one really interesting story that I, I I find you know a little feather in my cap. One of my clients who's already in an Alzheimer's stage. I was at her house actually looking for something else. Just opened up this one envelope to find a long-term care policy letter. Mm. And so I'm like, hmm, do you know it was an active policy? And she needed care, but, you know, she didn't didn't even remember she had this contract. And she was actually paying for it. And so I Mm -hmm. was able to activate that. And it was worth over $150,000 of benefit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, you know, the, over time we we accumulate a lot of things and sometimes forget about them. Uh, we have to take another break. Uh, there's so much more to talk about with this. Um, please stay tuned because we're coming right back to a flame ministry here on the BBM Global Network and Tune in Radio. We'll be right back. 
What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation tune into it's all about you with host dr martha latz a lively weekly broadcast on bbm global network one of the most empowering shows for time starved overscheduled multitaskers the professional expertise of dr latz is directly available live every thursday at 1 p.m to answer and address concerns about relationships life transitions of career meeting dating and committed relationships it's all about you with dr latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for Aflame Ministry, and we are here as always on TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. My guest today is Stacy Golden Lisnock. Um, we're talking about getting together all of those things about in case of an illness, in case of death, so that we don't leave a mess for somebody else to pick up and clean up. Stacy, uh, what what are some of those documents that people sometimes don't have? Yeah, I I you know people that most people don't even have a will. If you uh, if you look at the statistics in this country, you know people they just never get around to doing a will. And from my own personal practice as a financial advisor. Um, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't really do that for people. And all I can do is recommend that they get these things taken care of. And from one visit to the next to the next, they wouldn't do it. And I have these clients in mind that I've had for 25 years. I mean, now they're in their 70s, some of them in their 80s, and they still haven't gotten around to doing it. And I just find that that's just so unconscionable because I don't think that they understand what they're doing to the kids that they're leaving behind to have to handle they're creating this big mess, this big financial drain, time killer, right? And and it's unnecessary. And so mm-hmm. the will, you know, is, you know, the basic thing is having a will. But if you have other things like a home, you want to have a trust and you want to have these things so that you don't have to deal with probate court and dealing with lawyers and mm-hmm. years. I mean, California, it takes years to get through probate and of course oh, with wow. covid now <laughs> good luck with the courts right yeah. things are very slow right now so so the, the the paperwork you know we talk about the wills and trusts a lot but the other thing is the um advanced directive mm-hmm. so people yeah. don't have that either and that is where if you become unable to speak for yourself in a health crisis that somebody else knows what your wishes are and then yep. they can advise the doctors. And, you know, if you don't have these things in place and your family is stuck in trying to decide what's the right thing for you, sometimes that alone is what causes family grip. Because one, mm-hmm. one person might not want a certain procedure or might not want you to be unhooked from the machine, or, and you do and they don't. It could cause great guilt, actually, for the people that have to make those decisions. 
Yeah, as a, a, a pastor, uh, when I was serving in congregations, I saw those kinds of tough conversations and decisions within families a lot. And it, it's when those documents aren't there uh, to let you know, your family know what those wishes are. Yeah, it causes a lot of strife, or potentially can, uh, in all too many situations. Um, you know, what is going too far? What is not going far enough? How long? All of those questions are very difficult ones. And there's some simple documents. Now, I don't, it's not, available in all states, but there's something called My Four Wishes, at least there used to be out there that you could download from the internet. Um, and anybody can do that and fill that out. So what are there, are there other things that are easily available on the internet that people can get at and use? Yeah, so those, uh, the advanced directive is really like a combination of a, of a prox- healthcare proxy and a living will. So one is like while you're, you know, temporarily like in a health crisis kind of thing, the, the other one, the living will, is when you're at end stages of life. So this mm-hmm. advanced directive combines the two. And the, the one site, I mean, I, I, I give a lot of resources, but one that I can say real quick is called My Directive uh, mm-hmm. with a plural. That's mydirectives.com, and it's an, it's an online, um, and, and actually it can be stored digitally, so it can be retrieved from the doctors, the hospitals. They, they mm-hmm. actually know how to get in there and see if you have a rec- record of it. But it's free, and it's funded by, health, by uh, hospitals and doctor groups across the country because it makes their job so much easier. Mm-hmm. You know, really, yeah. when, you, when you can't make up your mind and you can't make a decision because you don't know what to do, it puts everybody in a quandary. And so that's a, a, go ahead. No, go ahead. Cause I was going to say something about something else, but I want to finish on that. Well, the, that's a good point because not only does the family need to know those advanced directives, but so does the doctor in a hospital. So it's important to share those things with your uh, medical personnel as well. So, you know, that's a whole nother layer on all of this, too. Um, so yeah. you said you know, they, you, they do get, they give that to you when you go in for surgery. You know, they like to mm-hmm. have it on file when you're going in. But, you know, that really isn't the time to be thinking about that. It's when you're not going into surgery <laughs> that you want to have yeah. a clear thought because you do have to put a little bit of thought to it. And it's uh, the place that your mind doesn't normally go like your own mortality, like what you would want done for yourself. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's my, my sister, what she was doing, the thing she said, I, she goes, I was, I, she says, I, I went through a whole box of Kleenex doing it. It was very emotional. It can, mm-hmm. it can bring up some things in you that are good. I mean, these are things that you, if it's that hard for you, think about how it would be for somebody else to have to yeah. make that decision. Yeah. And that's one of the things that my parents kept, putting off. Uh, it was almost like if they talked about it and dealt with it and things like a do not resuscitate order, which is part of an advanced directive, it's almost mm-hmm. like that would bring things on, bring on those kinds of conditions. So um, it, it's it's tough to think about our own mortality and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's a tough conversation. Um, yeah. And, and yet we need to learn about these things. How do we go about doing that? How do you think about that? Yeah, that's a good point, because how are you going to learn about something like this, which is not easy to talk about? It's not a fun conversation. You know, you're kind of like a downer at the party if you want to bring up <laughs> um, death and <laughs> what, what, you, what your wishes are, uh, where you want to be buried and things like that. But Mm -hmm. the thing of it is, is it's going to come up. And if you don't take the time to learn what needs to be done in advance, then, you know, it's going to be left for somebody else to have to deal with. So if Mm -hmm. you've never been in a position where somebody kind of dumped it on you, 
you don't really, you haven't learned that lesson, you know. So it's all about what you, what your parents um, ingrained in you and then Mm -hmm. what you learned if you haven't learned it on your own. And it's hard to learn stuff on your own, right? You go to school and then you get a job and then you have a family. Mm -hmm. There's never time to learn these things. And so that's why I brought my program to light. It's something that I believe everybody needs to do. And there's more to talk about with all of this, but we have to take another break. This is a flame ministry. We are here on the BBM Global Network and tuned in radio. Stay tuned. Stacy has a lot more to share. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veterans folk-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit, whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back. We are here on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for A Flame Ministry. My guest today, Stacy Golden Lisnock, uh, a financial planner turned financial advocate, helping us think about a topic we don't usually want to talk about is um, planning, preparing for, and getting together the documents that are needed in case of an illness or in case of somebody's passed away and how to do that beforehand. So we, as we came into the break before, Stacey, we're just starting to talk about how people can learn about all of this when most of us have never been taught about it. Um, Yes, there's some information online, but that can also be very confusing. So how do we learn about it? You know, that brings me back to when I was sick um, back in 2018. I'm laying on the couch, and as a financial advisor, you would think I have all my stuff. And I I do have my documents, but there's so much more to it that I thought, boy, my husband doesn't even really know how to pay the bills or he doesn't, he doesn't know much because I, I handle all of that stuff and he doesn't mm-hmm. really want to know. That's the other thing. I've, I've tried to share it with him. He doesn't really want to know, but I started buying workbooks thinking, you know, I'm going to get this all together. In fact, I bought a book called get it together. Um, mm-hmm. And it's this big workbook. And I was so happy with myself that I did that and it arrived and I, and I looked at it and <laughs> never did it. And then another, and then I ordered a different workbook because I thought, well, maybe that one's just too complicated. I ordered, I've ordered like four of them and they Mm -hmm. just sit there because I'm telling you what, even though you have the desire on some level and you know it's the right thing to do, it's just hard to get going with it because you really don't want to do it and you don't really know what to do. 
And so mm-hmm. that's when I came up with the idea of I'm just going to put a course together because I think there's other people that are having the same problem. They know it's the right thing. They want to do it. They really do, but they really just don't know where to start. And yeah. so I, I was a great student and I, and that whole idea of somebody telling you this is what we're doing in this module and in this lesson. And when you're done with this lesson and this module, you'll have it done. And then we can move mm-hmm. to the next module. So I have seven modules. And just to name them quickly, it's like we, we look at the estate planning stuff first because mm. I think that is really need to get in place. It's the hardest one to tackle. Um, but it includes the advanced directive and, like, the will and the trust. And then we look at insurance and um, reviewing beneficiaries. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Do you know that? Do you know that there's a lot of people that have ex spouses or ex bows or whatever uh, um, as their beneficiary? Well, that's a real problem mm-hmm. when you die, and then your actual spouse doesn't have any funds to bury you or to continue right. with their household expenses. Um, the next one we look at is all your credit and your debt. So people, you know, you need to you need to share what you know where the mortgage is and what loans you have and what your credit card balances are and how you're paying them. There's so much to that. And then we mm-hmm. look at titles and how you're holding titles. So this is another thing. People think they can do their own stuff. They can go put their kids on all their bank accounts. They can add their kids to their home title. That is the worst thing that you could possibly do. You are causing so much problems. <laughs> could be mm-hmm. problems for yourself in the, in, while you're still alive, um, but it's, it's also problems when you pass away that they um, they don't get the benefit of a step up in basis on on the property, which is a huge thing. Mm. It's a tax thing. Um, another thing we look at is the next one is your internet internet login, mm. internet password, oh. um, how to yeah, your Facebook accounts, all these things you can't get into them if somebody's passed and you don't know the passwords. So there's mm-hmm. ways to set up in advance legacy planning for that. Um, I've talked to somebody that they were, it took them three years to get something because they didn't have a password uh, and mm-hmm. they could, nobody would talk to them. And you, even though you have the death certificate and you think that's like the golden ticket, it doesn't always work that way. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one would be your budget. And that's because they need to know what's your current bills are because maybe you just become incapacitated and somebody has to handle your financial affairs and you don't want things to lapse. You don't mm-hmm. want the electricity to get turned off and, and things to um, go into late payments and default and so forth. Yeah. And then the last one we talked about is your final final wishes. Like, are you going to get buried? Do you want to be buried? Do you want to be cremated? What what do you, what do you what are your wishes? And if you if you have specific things that you want, um, then that needs to be known. But you can't wait to decide that because. You, if you have to go make those decisions when the person has already died, you have really not a lot of options, right? But if you're, right. if you're, if you or I right now could go around and we can kind of look, check out a few things and then make a decision um, of mm-hmm. what's going to be right. And that just saves so much stress. I even say, write your own obituary. Yeah. Because think about it. Yeah. You, you know yourself more than anybody. Yeah. And, and you if they you would like people to know. Right. And if you're part of a faith community, you can talk with the faith leader about what kind of service you would like, what you'd want included, if those are options for you. Um, I've done that with many people and, and things like that. And it's really helpful that at the time of death, so that the family doesn't have to think, oh, what's your favorite scripture passage or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and so, you know, all of those things can be planned ahead of time. So, um and with Absolutely. the option for changes, you know, as well um, as time goes by. But, yeah, it, you know, how many of us these days, I mean, I've got, I don't know how many passwords for things. And, um, it, you know, my husband would have to know how to get at all of that. Uh, or, you know, right. things would just plain not be available. Um and another thing is, where are you keeping the documents? Where are things located? You know, that's also uh, also something that has to be shared, so um, so people know where to look and where to find things. Um, 
like safety deposit boxes, you know, whatever. We have to take another break. This is a flame ministry, and we are here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host, and stay tuned because Stacy and I will be right back. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with a company empowerment cards she is a spirit book of the year gold medal living now book award winner and her book is a number one amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the living now spirit book of the year an inspirational speaker mj will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life your life did not just happen to you you chose it which means you can change it visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024 Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. We're back, and this is a Flame Ministry. I'm your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, and we are here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And my guest today is Stacy Golden Lisnak. We're talking about all of those planning documents and updating things that we need to do in case of an illness, in case of death, and um, how to find these things, what all goes into that. Stacy, how do we get started? Where where can people learn about this or where are ways to do that? Yeah, you know, I, I think that um, we're really fortunate in this era of the Internet because it makes learning so much easier, right? You can Google things. You can take courses. Now with COVID, it's even easier because so much is everything's online now it used to be um, I would do these kinds of talks at senior centers and things like that so it was like it was more of an effort to get there and have the conversation but now you know it's very easy and 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 planning for the inevitable right like this is going to happen to everybody Um, Mm -hmm. this should really just be a natural part of adulthood I'm surprised we don't learn this in school, but I'm surprised we don't learn, you know, we don't even learn how to balance a checkbook in school. So yeah. um, this whole, like, the practicality of life isn't really taught in school. It's, it's supposed to be taught in the home. But if your home doesn't know it, um, then you're not going to learn it there either. Right. Um, you know, this is something that when you're 18 years old, you should start, you should have documents in place, a health care directive. Um, the, the, do you know that your parents at 18, when you're 18, your parents no longer can get information on your medical condition or even if you have an appointment at the doctor. They can make an appointment mm-hmm. for you, but they can't find out. They can't call back and say, what time was that appointment? They won't tell you. Um, mm-hmm. And you, they can't get any, any records about their school. They can't get any information on their finances. They can't get anything. You're an adult. And so there's papers that you should have in place uh-huh. so that if you did get an accident, your parents could speak on your behalf, things like that. Um, but, but really, we want to talk to people that um, it, I think it works really well in groups. And the reason why is because when, when it's a good idea for one and then they let other people know they're doing it, it's like if you have other people doing it with you, it's a little easier, if you know what I mean. And you have people to talk about it with and, and mm-hmm. bounce ideas off of. 
um, sometimes you can't do that with your family because you're talking, you know, it's like, well, I don't really know if I should leave this kid or that kid in charge. Uh, what do you think? What, would, what should I think about? There's just, you got to talk mm-hmm. things through sometimes. But I really think that this is perfect um, to be offered by employer groups, by communities, um, by churches, by, by places where people congregate and have a sense of family and community mm-hmm. and doing the right thing. Because you know when somebody does pass away or becomes ill, everybody gathers around and mm-hmm. they bring dinners and they want to help you and anything that you ask. But do you know, I mean, the mess that people go through and they spend years, years and years trying to get these things resolved and some of them never get resolved. Yeah. So it's really important. It's very important. Yeah, what what you're talking about is leaving something behind to help your family, not just through the time of death, you know, the that short window when there may be a service if you're part of a faith community or something like that in a week or so afterward, but for months and sometimes, like you say, years afterward to clean this stuff up. And it's going to be tough, even under the best of circumstances, to a certain extent. But having these papers in place will take such a load off of the rest of the family, Um, spouse, children, whatever. And one of the things I find is that a lot of young parents don't have a will, haven't thought of anything about what would, if something happened to them, what would happen to their children. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really unconscionable, really, to think about the fact that, um, that you would ever, you know, die while you have young children, but it happens. And so then those young children have the rest of their life, you know, to live. And if there's nobody set up in advance to take care of them, that is like the guardian. So you would name a guardian mm-hmm. in your will. Um, and, and you don't just do that willy-nilly either. You have to make sure that you have the right person. Um, there's, there's just a set of things you want to go through to make sure that they're the right person to take your child. And then they have to agree to it. Don't make it a surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, right. <laughs> but, but imagine, yeah, imagine if you, if you were to pass away and your young child, you know, um, nobody wants them. They end up in the foster care system or everybody wants them and they be get their fought over. Um, mm. Or the court and the court decides, you know, it, it goes to the court and they decide. And sometimes they decide on the person, um, you know, people can clean up real well and they can they can appear very good. Um, but really, are they the, are they the, the moral framework and character that you want your child to be raised by? And so yeah. you really want to make sure that you have that in place. You know, the same, you talk about your children, and, and it's so, so, so important. What about your pets? People yeah. don't think about this. And, and, and most of the time, people don't put in place a plan for their pets, and they end up euthanized because they don't keep them long at the, at the uh, shelters, um, mm-hmm. at least in California. I mean, they're overrun with, you know, they have all these pets. But um, it's, it's, it's a shame because people love their pets. They're part of your family. And um, they have to be cared for, like, immediately. Somebody has to come and get them. Like, think about it. If you have, like, a heart attack and you're wheeled off in the, in the ambulance and they close the door behind you and you've got dogs or cats, who's mm-hmm. going to come take care of them? Right. So, you know, kids are very important, but you've got your other little fur babies as well. Um, mm-hmm. And these things are just part of what we talk about. We go over all of it, you know. Um, and you can do little things piecemeal here and there, but why not get it all done in the course, seven modules, you know, you have it together. And mm-hmm. then what you do is annually you look back at it and you make yeah. sure that things haven't changed or you make adjustments. Maybe you've closed out this account so you want to mark it off your list so they're not looking for it anymore um, right. if something should happen to you. Yeah. And that is important to keep reviewing things. Because, like you say, if there's a divorce, you know, and who's named as beneficiary, those kinds of things as well. We do have to take another break. Um, this is a flame ministry, and I am Pastor Kathleen Panning. We're here on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned, because we are coming right back. 
French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Welcome back. This is A Flame Ministry, and we are here on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host, and my guest today is Stacy golden Liznock. We've been talking about getting the paperwork together that you need um, and all of the other parts that go into, you know, Leaving things in order in case there's a sudden illness or you suddenly pass away um, and leaving things in order for your family. Uh, so, Stacy, we're running out of time. Please share any last thoughts and make sure people know how to get in touch with you. Great. Well, thank you for having me on the show, Kathleen. This has been really great, and I hope that people understand and now are enlightened a little bit as the fact that they have the uh, the power to make their children or whomever they leave behind make their lives easier by doing all of this stuff in advance and letting them know uh, where everything is and what they need to attend to um, because your life is complicated. Um, but I, you know, I w- welcome um, people to listen to my web, uh, my podcast because it's called Legacy Therapy, Legacy Therapy, and um, LegacyTherapyPodcast dot com is my website, uh, mm-hmm. and all of the past um, you know, episodes are there. But it comes out weekly on Fridays. Uh, anybody that's interested to look at the course, um, it's also available. I'm I'm going to offer right now um, to your listeners an opportunity to take module one uh, for free and and it, the, the whole course isn't very expensive anyways but but I'd like to um, offer that and I'm doing what's called a beta test group and so we're putting this through the first group and just make sure that they understand everything and that it flows well and so you're going to get a lot of personal attention by me in this first group and the way to actually um, access that is to text the word free and text that word to uh, my phone number, which is 714-709-2027, 714-709-2027. Um, and if, if you um, Google my name or you Google um, Got It Together Now, com is the website. So there's lots of ways to find me, and hopefully, um, you know, if you're listening to a replay, it'll be in the show notes. Yeah, um, and Golden Liznock is hyphenated, uh, Golden hyphen 
Liznock, L-I-S-N-O-C-K, uh, if you want to Google Stacy, And it's uh, yeah. Stacy with an E, S-T-A-C-E-Y. Um, so <laughs> just all those little things that can uh, make things a little bit easier. Thank you, Stacy. I know that, you know, this week is Thanksgiving coming up. So if you're listening to a replay, get a little context here. Um, and no matter when it is, a lot of people just don't like to think about this stuff. But doing it, taking care of it, your family will be very, very thankful uh, when the time comes that they have to deal with this. And so it's a way of bringing some thanks into your giving uh, them a way of being thankful uh, in the future. And hopefully it'll be a long time in the future, but we never know. So um, get the things planned and in place as soon as possible and check out Stacy's website and her gift uh, to get a hold of me please go to a flame ministry consulting.com and you can find me there also on Facebook or you can find me at on Facebook with just my name Kathleen dot panning uh, uh, on Facebook and you can get a hold of me in either of those places so if you have questions, comments about the show uh, please do that and I also in the show, always end the show by asking people to do two things one, find three things every day that you're thankful for, um, can be small but three things and one way to share a little bit of God's love so stay he, Thank you for being here today and sharing your gifts with us. And to everyone else, come back next week for another show. This has been a Flame Ministry with your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Tune in each week as Kathleen guides you through the many challenges that face our faith-based communities today as she ignites the ministry of your faith community so that more people can hear the message of God's love on Kathleen Panning's A Flame Ministry. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.